This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, the multi-million dollar redevelopment of Dunedin's waterfront came closer to being a reality today. Acting Prime Minister Winston Peters is advising Southlanders to apply for regional development funding. And things got hotter than usual at a suburban Dunedin co coffee roasting plant, alerting emergency services. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The multi-million dollar development of Dunedin's waterfront has come closer to being a reality today. The government's announced an $820,000 cash injection for the project from the government's Provincial Growth Fund, with a further $60,000 going to the development of Otago's Economic Development Strategy. The announcement was made by the Regional Economic Development Minister, Shane Jones, at Toy Toy this afternoon. A flying view of a potential future. The newest animation research graphics reveal what could replace the rundown Dunedin Wharf area. The project now has government backing, with Regional Economic Development Minister Shane Jones announcing an $820,000 investment in the government's Provincial Growth Fund. I have yet to encounter uh, a project uh, of this scale. Uh, scale in the sense of the vision that the architect uh, has put into it, but also scale in what could very well be the major transformational endowment this part of New Zealand. The money will pay for a full feasibility assessment and the development of a business case for the Dunedin Waterfront Project. Mayor Dave Cull says today's announcement is significant. It vindicates the vision because uh, the council was unanimously behind the bridge aspect of it uh, and unanimously behind the development of the vision and so are our partners, University of Otago, Ngaitahu, Port Company, uh, ORC. This is the next step where we actually have government vindication of this, government support for this. The waterfront plan was put forward by Dunedin architect Damien Van Brandenburg and businessman Ian Taylor last year. Economic Development Minister David Parker says it bodes well for the city's future. Already you can feel the confidence of Dunedin lifting. Uh, people have a sense of, uh, of, of um, prospectivity, you know that there's a positive future for Dunedin. Jones says a revitalised waterfront including a hotel and residential accommodation will provide a focal point to add to Dunedin's appeal as a visitor destination. But he wants to see the city build on the momentum of today's announcement. Don't spend too much time writing diagrams on paper. Go out there and win the hearts and the minds of the people and bring back proposals. Certainly uh, by the end of this year, early next year, so our cabinet can sink their teeth into them. The council's already backed the wider concept by committing to a $20 million architectural bridge to the site in Dunedin, the south today. The armed defenders squad descended on the Dunedin suburb of Tomahawk this afternoon while executing a raid on a property in the area. A witness says they saw squad members near Bayfield High School just before noon. Police dogs were also in the squad vehicle. Tomahawk Road was cordoned off for a time. Southlanders are being told to get in quick if they want a piece of the government's provincial growth fund. Acting Prime Minister Winston Peters has been in Invercargill to talk about regional development opportunities for Southland at a dinner hosted by Venture Southland. Southland is attending a dinner with Acting Prime Minister Winston Peters were told to get in quick if they want a piece of a $1 billion government fund. At the dinner hosted by Venture Southland, Peters urged Southlanders to submit applications immediately for the Provincial Growth Fund. Well, we are about rebuilding the provinces to ensure they've got the infrastructure and the economic uh, wherewithal to be what they can be in a modern economy. They've got all the raw resources and uh, in the past you'd go to central government and wait years for something to happen and we're saying get your applications in now and if they're viable and sound then they'll be successful. A lot of these things as I say are seasonal, they depend upon if it's development, the, the right weather, so now's the time, it's the middle of winter now and get going as fast as you can. 
Peters said the fund was designed for the surge regions, which have been identified as having been neglected, but that all provinces had the opportunity to receive funding. It is for the whole of the country, except in the big city and metropolitan areas, and it'll in the end work like this. If we don't apply, then we can't respond. Speaking after the Acting Prime Minister, Venture South and Chief Executive Paul Casson indicated there were already applications coming out of Southland from as early as tomorrow. Sharon Rees, The South Today. An Auckland academic says Omaru, not Auckland, is home to the largest population of Pacific people per capita. Auckland University Associate Professor of Pacific Studies, Damon Salisa, told Radio New Zealand one in four Omaru residents were Pacific people, a larger ratio than in Auckland or Wellington. He says there are areas within Auckland with high concentrations of Pacifica people, but due to the cost of living in the city, people are looking elsewhere. Salisa says one church parish in Omaru has two Tongan congregations, the rugby clubs have grown with an influx from the north, and there is a lively local Pacific community. Smoke at a coffee roastery in Dunedin resulted in a fire call out this morning. Luckily the fire had extinguished itself by the time emergency services with two fire appliances arrived. Relieved the fire services didn't have to roll out their water hoses this morning. Workers at the coffee roastery on Eglinton Road were able to breathe easy after the coffee got more than a little roasted. It was only a uh, fire in the flue of a coffee roaster. It had gone out itself. We're just checking to make sure it hadn't spread anywhere else. Senior Officer Ben Pytelin encourages people to dial 111 when they suspect fire. Yeah, call us. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll never be criticised for calling us, even if you don't need us. We, uh, we prefer to come and find nothing than get called too late and the whole building is... He says the business did the right thing in calling emergency services. In Dunedin, for the South Today. Still to come on the South today, one of Scotland's most famous authors is due to visit Dunedin and we met a cowboy from Omaru who competed in the USA and did well. Bathroom Solutions is locally owned and operated and is a name that has become synonymous with bathroom excellence. Exclusive to Oakley South Island, Danish design Vola, the modern day tap, remains a desirable choice. For over 140 years, the team at Oakley's has provided the highest quality bathroom products and plumbing supplies. For intelligent advice and smart service, come talk to the team or visit oakleysplumbing.co.nz. They've been moving earth for nearly 30 years. Locally owned and operated, Paul Brothers Transport is your one-stop shop when it comes to demolition, site clearance, recycling buildings, chipping trees, earthworks, drainage and roading, nothing goes to waste. Paul Brothers Transport can get the whole job done from start to finish, no matter how big or small. Give them a call on 4771 141 or drop into 26 Creswell Street behind the railway station. That's Hall Brothers Transport Limited. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Being a big softy takes training. Oh, I've gone to great lengths to become even softer while still being strong and reliable. The new me is bigger and softer than ever. Cotton Softs. Softness and strength you can trust. Locally owned and operated Roslyn Mowers and Heating are warming up for winter with a range of mass port wood fires. For obligation free installation quotes, sales, building consent assistance and after sales service and parts. That's Roslyn Mowers and Heating. 
Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Too late to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. Stay warm this winter with Alistair McCann's Wooden Coal Door-to-Door -door Delivery. You don't have to lift a finger. Call Alistair to order today on 454-3592. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty. So if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on Welcome back. The writer of cult novel Train Spotting, Irvine Welsh, is coming to Dunedin in September. The visit has been coordinated by Dunedin Writers and Readers Festival. Welsh will talk with New Zealand writer Toby Manhire at an event on September the 2nd. The Scottish novelist is best known for Train Spotting, which was made into a 1996 film of the same name. A film sequel to T2 Train Spotting was released last year. An Omarama-based gunman has just come back from a successful turn at the Cowboy Action World Championships held in the United States. The event sees competitors welding firearms of typical of the mid to late 19th century in a Wild West scenario. Gun-slinging skills of the Wild West. Charles Innes shows off his shooting talents which were recently put to the test at the Cowboy Action Champs in the US. The sport requires competitors to dress the part and use firearms typical of the mid to late 19th century. Um, it's a, a multi-gun event with two revolvers, a lever action rifle uh, and a uh, shotgun, either a pump or a side-by-side. -side. Inners, affectionately known as the Lindus Ranger, did well in recent world championships in New Mexico and came top in several other events in the US. We had four other shoots leading up to the world champs um, and I, I took out uh, top duelist at each one of those. Cowboy action shooting or western shooting began in the 1980s and Innes says it's an easy sport to get into. I was on the west coast six years ago and went to Cowboy Paradise and had a go at shooting up there and 
came back here and uh, looked up the nearest pistol club and started from there really. He plans to return to the US in two years time, aiming to take home the title. In central Otago, for the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we see why some famous Canterbury landmarks are falling away and we also look at how bad the weather is supposed to get during the weekend. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. At Sellers Campbell Men's Wears, Newhead Clearance. Buy one, save 25%. Buy two or more, save 33%. That's a third. Lots of New Zealand made and imported quality garments. Wool mix, pure wool, 100% merino. Merino cashmere, merino possum, heavy work fishernets. V-neck, crew neck, quarter zip, button collar, full zip, plain stripes, argyles, ferrules, self patterns, you name it, even some ladies colours. Knitwear clearance, buy one save 25%, buy two or more save 33% on all of them. Alex Campbell Men's Wears, three stores. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Oakley's Bathroom Solutions is locally owned and operated and is a name that has become synonymous with bathroom excellence. Exclusive to Oakley South Island, Danish design Vola, the modern day tap, remains a desirable choice. For over 140 years, the team at Oakley's has provided the highest quality bathroom products and plumbing supplies. For intelligent advice and smart service, come talk to the team or visit oakleysplumbing.co.nz. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Locally owned and operated Roslyn Mowers and Heating are warming up for winter with a range of mass port wood fires for obligation free installation quotes, sales, building consent assistance and after sales service and parts. That's Roslyn Mowers and Heating. Stay warm this winter with Alistair McCann's Wood & Coal door-to-door -door delivery. You don't have to lift a finger. Call Alistair to order today on 454-3592. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. They've been moving earth for nearly 30 years. Locally owned and operated, Hall Brothers Transport is your one-stop shop when it comes to demolition, site clearance, recycling buildings, chipping trees, earthworks, drainage and roading, nothing goes to waste. Hall Brothers Transport can get the whole job done from start to finish, no matter how big or small. Give them a call on 4771 141 or drop into 26 Creswell Street behind the railway station. That's Hall Brothers Transport Limited. the hard to find bookshop we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent and where viable we will come to you we have a great reputation for integrity and honesty so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell contact us step into shop on carol and discover a shop full of treasures we have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes upmarket clothing labels collectible items beautiful jewelry quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery 
too late to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. Thanks for staying with us. It's quarterfinal time in the Super Rugby competition, with the Highlanders taking on the Waratahs in Sydney. Head coach Aaron Major has named his strongest side for the match. The team's All Blacks return, including Ben Smith, Aaron Smith and Luke Whitelock, as well as centre Rob Thompson. This is the fifth consecutive year the Highlanders have made the playoffs, finishing in sixth position at the end of the round robin stage. The match kicks off at 10pm New Zealand time this Saturday from Alliance Stadium in Sydney. The seawall Wakanui in Canterbury has been permanently damaged over the years through erosion and there's no sign of it slowing. The Ashburton Courier's John Keast visits the sea cliffs to survey the damage. Mid Canterbury's cliffs are a snapshot in time. The river stone, the soil, Gravels of all sorts, and the experts say there is nothing quite like them anywhere. The sea cliffs extend for 70 kilometres, and these here at Wakanui, near Ashburton, are estimated to be between 30 and 40,000 years old. They are very fragile, and the layers of clay and gravel have been eroded by a relentless Pacific. Scientists believe the original coast of their South Island was 55 kilometres further out to sea than now. The sea has cut into the gravels, producing the crumbling cliffs we see today. Erosion is a problem along this coast, and further along at Hackettery, a row of batches was removed because of the fear they would, one day, fall into the sea. And a section of car park there has been closed because it too fell away. The area is always changing, and environmentalist Mary Rolston says a total log was found recently at the base of a cliff further south at Coldstream. That log has been dated, she says, at around 3,400 years old. It may have been grown locally or been carried, carried down a river further up the plains. John Keast, for South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The multi-million dollar redevelopment of Dunedin's waterfront came closer to being a reality today following a sizeable donation from the government. Southlanders are being told to get in quick if they want a piece of the government's provincial growth fund by the acting Prime Minister. And things got hotter than usual at a suburban Dunedin coffee roasting plant, however a small fire was out by the time Fire and Rescue New Zealand arrived. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Paul Gorman. What have you got tomorrow's for us Saturday in tomorrow's paper? Like to you uh, by... said there about the extra money for, from the government for the uh, the harbour front development. So Shane Jones was in town. Eight hundred twenty thousand dollars. The government is going to stump up um, to help with the feasibility study, which is great. Uh, apparently, the minister also talked about um, the engineering hub idea in Dunedin uh, and supporting that. Uh, possibly hillside, a resurgence of something at hillside, and maybe more logging ships. In so things are looking well. really positive. I know, that sounds really good, doesn't it? It's a lot of stuff, but I mean, you know, that, that's, that does sound good for the regions. Yeah. Um, we've also got something that's sort of aligned with that, the hospital jobs, the amount of work that's going to be needed to rebuild the hospital. Basically, that is going to require hundreds of people, and they're saying that will also need significant government funding. So that kind of ties into that as well. So, you know, Dunedin in the next 10, 20 years could be a pretty busy, pretty vibrant place, workers. So I hope good. those lights sort themselves out, and otherwise we're going to have traffic jams. Yeah. That's, no, that's right. That's really good. Um, we've got heaps in the paper. I'll just 
mention a few other things. Uh, the inside out, the gardening page. Basically, what do you do if you're downsizing? Um, so, you know, maybe put things in pots, take clippings throughout the year if you know you're moving, so that you can move some of your garden with you. It's quite interesting. We have a very strong editorial tomorrow on the census and how it failed this year, you know, with it being electronic. Yeah. Um, and a really strong story in the opinion page uh, about Trump and Putin meeting and the, it's Gwyn Dyer's con, he's very clever, and just talking about there's obviously some kind of hold that Russia has over Trump. And it's really well worth reading, that's great. Plus we have the sports tab as well. So if you like rugby, it's all about rugby tomorrow. If you don't like rugby, maybe wait another day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe wait till Saturday. Yeah. Fantastic. So there's something for everyone in tomorrow's ODT. And now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Map. Starting with today's southern view, taking of a cat enjoying the midday sun and a copy of the ODT. Looking at the situation, a milder northwesterly airflow develops tomorrow ahead of a cold front due later on Saturday, which is promising rain then snow flurries by Monday. Heading to the southern towns, cloud increases with freshening northwesterlies and 12 degrees predicted for Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden. Looking up to central Otago, Wanaka and Queenstown have moderate northwesterlies, some high cloud and 10 degrees. Alexandra is the pick of the bunch with moderate northwesterlies and a high of 13, but expect rain later in the day in Tiana with freshening northwesterlies and 11 degrees. To the northern centres, Omaru and Timaru are due for light northeasterlies, some high cloud and a high of 12. Omaru and Twizel are 2 degrees lower on 10 with northwesterlies. Here in Dunedin tonight, it's fine and cold with an overnight low of 4 degrees. Tomorrow, Maira with high cloud increasing and moderate northerly winds developing with a high of 13 and a low of 4. And mostly fine on Saturday with sunny periods and strong northerly winds, a low of 7 and a high of 13 degrees. And in Invercargill tonight, high cloud increasing with light northerly winds and an overnight low of 7 degrees. Tomorrow mild and northwesterlies freshen with some rain at night, a high of 14 and a low of 7. And cloudy conditions are forecast on Saturday with periods of rain and strong north to northwesterly winds, a high of 13 and a low of 9. That's our news for this Thursday. For the latest news from the southern region, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube and at channel39.co.nz. For full stories, check out www.odt.co.nz. Have a great evening. Take care. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.